there's a very big sort of anti-pattern in React that I see a lot of junior developers make, and it has to do with layout style. So just to quickly show you, here we have an H1 on the page, right? So here, uh, I'm using Next.js here, but doesn't matter. This is my H1 here, and I have given it some styling. At some point, I will want other pages, let's say a pricing page, and I want the same H1 styles on every page, right? So on this page, I want the same. So I can just copy this for now, and here the text would be different, but the styling should stay the same. So far, so good. Now this copy pasting of things in React, that's not a good practice, right? So here we want to create a reusable component. So we can just use one component for that H1. So here we can create a component. Let's actually call it H1. You can pass in the text. So that's just going to be children. Right, so I'm just going to pass through the children. And then to use that component, right, all standard React so far. Now the class name will not work like that. So we have to add it here. Right, so here I'm going to just move it over here. So the styling is now in that component. And now here I can also just use that H1. Right, so now I have one reusable component that I can use on every page. And they all have the same styles now. Right, this is a reusable component. And it has these styles. Now I'm going to continue building out the pricing page. I'm going to add some cards. But you can see that this is sitting right next to each other. There should be some space. You may say, oh, this H1, it needs to, it needs to add some margin on the bottom. So you go to the H1. Well, it's a component. So you go to to the h1 here again and you're gonna add some margin on the bottom of let's say five and now if i go back you can see there is some nice space here but this is a big problem because now if i go to the home page i also added the margin here remember we are using that same component here as well and here we don't need that margin in fact now the design looks off there's too much space here now because we don't want the margin here on the bottom but because it's the same component and we added this margin to that reusable component it's applied every everywhere where you use it. So on every page right now, we would have this H1 with that margin on the bottom, even though it was only in this particular instance where we wanted that margin. This is one example of why you don't want to add layout styles to reusable components. This is not really what you want to do. So what's a better way? Well, you don't want to add it here, but I do need spacing here. So what would be a solution then in that case? Well, you could try adding the margin to another element on the page. In this case, that I could add margin on the top here, but but it's not always going to be possible, right? Maybe this was actually just uh, a card here. And I cannot just add margin on the top here for the card because I may want to use the card somewhere else as well. So one solution that you could use is just add a one-off div. So you can add it, wrap it in a div, this pricing. And then, well, just add the margin on the bottom right here. Now I have this space here and I have not polluted the reusable component with margins. So in this home, on the home page here, the H1 here still looks good. So it makes sense that we don't add the margin to the component itself. We delegate it to its parent element. So now that we're learning about React best practices, I want to share a resource that can help you further improve your coding skills and many other skills, which is called Skillshare. They are today's sponsor and they offer a lot of courses. They offer in-depth courses on, on many different topics from development to photography from art and illustration to design, film and video, marketing and business, and many other courses from the fundamentals to advanced taught by industry experts. So if you're just starting out or you're looking to level up, Skillshare makes learning effective and engaging. So I recently came across this Figma UI UX design course because I was looking for a way to improve my design skill. So this one got me really interested. And what I like about Skillshare is they also put an emphasis on learning by doing. So it's not just mindlessly consuming content they have ways of making it more engaging. And right after that one, I can take a more advanced course as well. So Skillshare is not only for absolute beginners, there are also courses available for more intermediate and advanced levels. So I would say check out Skillshare. You can find a link in the description and the first 500 people who use the link get a one month free trial at Skillshare. Now there is actually an even better solution. Let me show you that as well. So we got rid of the div. Now we still have this issue. How do we get that space? What would be a really nice solution is if we could do something like what you're used to with these elements. If we could do something like margin bottom on the five like this, just like how you're used to with these native H1 tags, we can just do this, right? We would like to do the same with our custom components. That would be nice. However, our component does not accept the class name prop. It does not accept class name. So let's make it accept class name. But now how do we how do we make sure that it gets combined with the existing styles here? Because we, we want to keep these, 
Well, we can use a utility function. Maybe you've seen it before. It's a CN. So it's, it's, it's this a CN utility function. So here it's just a function. And the first argument is just like the, the standard styles. And then I do comma class name. So whatever I'm passing in, in this case, it was margin on the bottom of five. It just gets merged with the existing styles. And you can see when I saved here, actually, I got the result I wanted without adding any other div or sort of polluting any other elements. And now it works the same as my traditional elements. And if I go back to the homepage, you can see this is not affected either, right? Only in this particular instance are we adding this class name. So this CN utility function has recently gotten very popular because of Shad CN. You've probably seen it around. I have a separate video on this if you want to learn more about this. It looks very complicated, but but if you watch the video, it, I explain everything. It's basically just a sophisticated way of combining these existing styles with whatever you're passing in as a as a class name. And to type it, I'm going to say the class name is optional. So you don't have to pass in a class name if you don't want. I think it's a very easy mistake to make. You don't really think about it because a lot of these components, for example, this subscribe button as well, right? The subscribe button is sitting here. It's a separate component. I'm intending to use this in other, in, in other places as well. I've put it here and I've added some margin to it, right? The first time you, when you create a component, you don't really realize what you're doing. But now if I want to use it in another place, maybe on the pricing page, right? In these, in these cards. So if I go to the cards, so now I'm adding it to these cards here, but you can see because of that existing margin, we have this weird, very wide space at the bottom, which I don't want. I want it to be symmetrical with the top. And also there's too much space here on the top side. And that's because it's an inherent part of the component right now. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to accept a class name prop. And I'm basically just going to use the CN trick again. So, so all the base styles except the margin will stay here. And then I can pass something in if I want. So now on the homepage, you can see there's no margin anymore. So now if I want to add margin, I could wrap it in a diff. Right? Maybe you prefer that solution and just add margin to the div or maybe to uh, add some other existing parent component. But I like this solution. So now I can just add class name with whatever I want. So now this looks good again. And on the pricing page, in these cards, I can add maybe just some margin on the top and nothing on the bottom. You may have noticed that I'm using padding here. Padding typically is fine, I think, because it's, it's actually a part of an element. So padding, when I just increase this, for example, you can see the blue part, that's the background, it changes with it. So it's, you could say it's, it's actually the element that so it should be part of, it should be an inherent part of the element. With margin, it's different. Margin is not really part of the element, it's space between elements. So that's why it makes more sense to pull the margin out of the, out of the element, out of the component and delegate it to a parent element. And the other thing I often see with this as well is for example, width. So any kind of layout style, margin or width, you want to be careful with this. So a junior may make some button, some specific width, let's say 130 pixels. Well, now in this card, it's also going to be 130 pixels. But what if I want this to span the entire width here? Let's say it should, it should take up the entire 100% of the card. So you also don't want to add width or height. Instead, that's also something that should be up to the parent here. So maybe on the homepage, I don't want to change anything. The default looks fine. But in this card, I want it to span the entire width. So here I can just add width full. And then you can see I have a nice width here. And about these cards, by the way, so you can see I gave this card, which is also meant to be a reusable component, a width here. That's probably not what I want to do. So I can remove it here and I and then I have this so then here in the on the pricing page I have wrapped these cards in a div and this is where I add a width right now I want them to sit next to each other so I can add flex and I can position them in some way I want all here at the parent level not in the component itself but now what if I want some space between them you may be inclined to go to these cards and add some margin on the right of each one or something like that but again that's not what we want to do so instead I, you want to do it here so with flexbox for example we have the gap property Right, so you can just use something like this and space it out that way. There's also space in Tailwind space. So here, this would also work similarly. However, this may actually cause some issues if you're using it together with Flexbox. So this is more meant outside of Flexbox, I would say. And if you're using Flexbox, it's better to use the gap property in my view. And what about the size here? So the size here is a little bit trickier because what if I want to make these cards a little bit bigger, let's say 300 pixels width each. So again, you're very inclined to say, well, I'm just going to add it to the card here, but that's not what we want to do. Here is maybe where you do want to use like a one off div. I think that's fine. What you can do here is just make this one 300 pixels. Actually, let's make it 250 pixels. So here's where I decide the width here, 250 pixels each. I'm allowing them to wrap onto a new line. 
And then what you can do in the component at the component level is you can just add with full and age full, which means they will take up 100% of their parent element. That's also a common way of dealing with this size. Here, there's no space vertically because I only used X. So that's not a benefit of using the gap property. Very easy to, to add it to both, to also make it vertical. And now if I want, I can use this card somewhere else and it's still gonna be customizable in some other instance. Or instead of width, you may want to use flex basis. And I don't have to use these divs if you don't want that. You could also use the class name uh, trick again. The point here is you don't want to add layout styles to your reusable component because it harms your ability to customize it in other instances. It's also one of the issues that we talk about in one of the projects of my React and Next.js course. So if you really want to master React, I highly recommend you go through that course. In any case, hope this was helpful. Let me know what you think. I'm Wesley, by the way, I'm a brand ambassador for Kind, which is a paid sponsorship. And I also want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And I want to thank you for watching this video. Bye.